How's it going, Bladesers? This is David with Blade Banter, working to bring you specifications you can relate to so you can have an educated decision on your purchase. This is thank you to LTK, Love Them Knives, provided this to the Pastor Iron Group, so thank you to him. So this is designed by LTK and Max Tkachuk. Hey, that's probably very wrong, uh, but behence.net. Uh, so you can check him out as far as his work. Uh, this one is going to be called the Vandal, which is a TS329, and it's 14C28N and titanium. So this is going to be the first one that he's going to have for it. He's also going to SHOT Show, so that's coming up here pretty soon. So check his uh, coverage out for that, and then we'll have this for his first knife design. Uh, so this is going to be what it sits like in the pocket, and then uh, we're going to be taking that out to see what it looks like as well. So it does have this uh, looks like a ceramic ball. Uh, for that uh, pocket clip there. Uh, decent in and out of the pocket. Uh, it holds up a little bit if you have some thicker fabrics, uh, but that's going to be what it is there, and it's going to be where it says Vandal right there. So that's going to be what that looks like for it. Uh, but uh, the detent on this is pretty light, uh, which is kind of uh, kind of a balance to what it is because uh, this opening area isn't necessarily usable in its current condition uh, because uh, it just it's just too smooth. Uh, so there needs to be a little bit more of a ridge to it uh, to be able to deploy uh, regularly. I know that on um, uh, OCD for EDC, uh, he went and uh, milled out the whole area, so that probably um, helps out quite a bit. Uh, but if they can do that for uh, multiple, the next generation of this model, then that probably would be a good thing to add on there to either make it a little bit more ridged or to just cut it straight through. That will probably help out with that deployment. So this says only about a one pound uh, deployment. So and be able to actually deploy it from basically this location here, using an alignment pull gauge, uh, doing the pull on that. It's only about one pound, which is pretty low uh, for most knives. Uh, most knives, uh, thumb stud, it's gonna be about two pounds. Uh, this is gonna be a one pound flipper tab knives are normally around three pounds of pull uh, before it actually breaks. Uh, so that's gonna be what uh, is kind of a low side for that. Uh, but uh, that's gonna be, yeah, I mean, it's where the deployment side, it, it only has really uh, one deployment, uh, maybe two if you can count uh, kind of the traditional style of opening as far as a two hand open. Uh, but otherwise it's kind of the elementum style where you're going to be flipping it open and closed. Uh, it does, uh, uh, it is one that you just kind of have to let the button go uh, once you start to close it. Otherwise it does bounce quite a bit. So if you actually just let it go and it bounces, uh, but you can let it go and then just release, release the button right when it uh, releases the deployment and that will hold up pretty well for it. Uh, this one is going to be uh, one that uh, weight wise is going to be uh, quite uh, quite high uh, for a knife. I mean, it's a big knife as well, uh, but this is going to be a titanium carbon fiber inlay. Uh, it does have the button lock uh, for it, which is uh, it's my preferred method of deployment and uh, lock, uh, just like I put on my own knife. But uh, this is going to be 6.2 ounces. So that's going to be 31 quarters. I don't have 31 quarters, uh, so... Um, just uh, take my word for that one. Uh, but basically, if you want to have that in hand, uh, basically a quarter is about 0 0.2 ounces, a penny is 0 0.1 ounces. So you can put that onto any knife that you have available to you, kind of do the math on that, lay it on there, and then that's where you can get a feel of how that is in your hand. Or if you have an iPhone 13, uh, that weighs uh, 6.14 ounces, so it does weigh a touch more than iPhone 13. Uh, so if you do have that available, then this is going to be uh, pretty much spot on to that uh, weight for it. Uh, and then uh, this one coming in at a price point that is kind of variable, uh, which is also a hard thing about it, because uh, at the high point of it, there's probably $700 on eBay, uh, because it's a limited run. Uh, so right now, you're probably going to be getting it for about 100 uh, 20 to $700. Uh, so MSRP, not really MSRP, because it's eBay, it's Tucson. That's kind of how that works, and that's how that uh, game is played. Now it gets a direct uh, sale from the manufacturer. Uh, so that's something that um, is kind of good and bad. I mean, they, they, they offer some really good products. They offer um, a lot of different products, uh, but that is one thing that they don't really have a direct seller. Uh, uh, White Mountain Knives sometimes has their product available, but I didn't see this on their site. Uh, so that's where you're going to kind of be playing that game with eBay for a while. And if they continue to release it, then they'll, of course, have more available. Uh, I would guess that Lee would have more available, too, at some point. Uh, but that's going to be yeah, the price point on that. Uh, so this one's going to be uh, blade length. is going to be a pretty 
a substantial blade. Uh, this is going to be a stone wash on this and then that's going to be about 3.95 and surprisingly the cutting edge is about 3.95 too so basically I laid on a piece of paper and then uh, rotate it over uh, to get that full cutting edge and that's going to be 3.95 as well so that's interesting that blade length and then also the cutting edge is going to be the same for this it's going to be a flat grind for this one here uh, and then I didn't get the angle for it so where'd my little gauge go so we'll get the angle uh, for the flat grind. I think it was about 7 degrees or 8 degrees for it. It's about 8 degrees uh, for the sun here. Uh, so that's basically got the laser light in there. And it kind of refracts the light so you can get the primary as well as the secondary edge uh, for it. So about 8 degrees uh, for this angle here. Uh, that's where uh, basically the kitchen knife is going to be up three degrees, which is like really, uh, really slicey. But this one is going to be about eight degrees for it. Uh, beyond the edge thickness, I got was about five sheets of paper, about twenty-two thousandths uh, for uh, this knife here, and then it's about nineteen and twenty degrees uh, for the bevel. Uh, so for that secondary bevel, for that sharpening edge. Uh, so it's, it actually cuts very well. I was kind of surprised by that as far as it cutting well, uh, but. Uh, it actually did pretty well with the most cardboard cutting and everything else and whatever else kind of you want to put it through as far as use. Uh, 3.82 uh, millimeters for the blade stock, about 0 0.50 uh, inches uh, for that. Again, 14C28. And then using the information off of Knife Steel Nerds is kind of going to be where I'm going to be quoting for information. Uh, they do use uh, a lot of kind of that scientific method uh, to get some of their information. So they kind of have a test blank uh, with the with the steel, they heat treat it. Uh, so that's going to be uh, as, as controlled as you can get it uh, for the knife. And then that's going to be for 14C28, you're looking at corrosion resistance about 8.5 out of 10, uh, edge retention about a 3 out of 10, and then a uh, toughness is going to be about a 9 out of 10. So depending on what's important to you, it's going to come out with a really good edge for it. Uh, this one almost has a mirror polish edge, so I don't know if that's going to be uh, something that is from the factory or somebody touched it up because this is a pasture on a knife, so I don't know what it was done uh, to it before I saw it. Uh, this one also actually has a 5.45 inch a total handle so large hands yeah you're gonna have no problem with this you're gonna have smaller hands it's just gonna look really big but uh, some people just really like the size of knife uh, there's only gonna be a right hand tip up so that's gonna be the only carry for this model here and then out of the pocket there's about 14 ounces uh, so uh, again using the liming pull gauge is basically getting this and then pulling it out of the pocket. So I removed the weight of the knife. And so the knife itself, again, was 6.2 ounces. Uh, so then uh, pulling this out of the pocket, uh, that's about 20 ounces, so 16 ounces a pound. So it's gonna be over a pound uh, that you're kind of pulling to get this out of your pocket. Uh, so it doesn't increase the weight of the knife, but with the resistance, uh, that is where at the most or the highest point, you're pulling over a pound out of your pocket. Uh, for that so if that makes sense if not let me know and I'll kind of try and clarify that as we go uh, but for buy bar or avoid I would say a borrow uh, it's a nice lockup uh, nice deployment uh, two methods uh, but this is one part as far as that other deployment method uh, let's see if I can even do it so I'll try so I got it there but there's a time when yeah so you can do it uh, it's something you have to kind of either either really not concentrate about on it or concentrate a lot on it and it will work for you. But it's not one of those deployment methods that's like really uh, intuitive. Uh, button, of course, is going to be really intuitive for opening and closing on that way. Uh, but uh, that's kind of like that uh, elementum as far as a single deployment. This one does have a detent to it. Again, that's about one pound of detent. Uh, one thing bad about it too, now uh, this one does have a free spinning pivot. Uh, so I saw an LTK's video as far as when he took it apart. Uh, so they do sell a tool uh, on uh, White Mountain Knives to actually you know, basically hold that pivot in there. It seemed like the tolerance were tight enough where he was able to disassemble it without having to have that be an issue. But uh, just for your reference, if you're gonna be maintaining this knife, you may run to a point where you just can't take apart the knife if the Loctite's on there or something else happens without 
having that tool that locks in the other side. So that's kind of a bad side about it. It is something that's available, uh, but uh, it's rather have a D-shaped pivot. Uh, and then this is actually a limited run. So we'll see what they come out with going forward. Uh, but this was kind of uh, one that you really needed to fight for to bring this out. So it's a good thing that he had a design out there, has a design out there uh, for uh, Leave LTK or Love Them Knives. And then on the inside of it, it does have information. Let's see if I can have a flashlight on me. But uh, inside of here, uh, you can refer to his video. So there's no real, um, no, nothing really on the blade other than the Tucson logo. But inside the scale, it'll have LTK. It'll have also uh, Max's logo. And then it'll have 14C28 in there and also the model number. And that's one thing also about this this laser engraving. It is very proud uh, for it. And so it's not, it's a kind of builds up on it. It's not really one that is just there. And so it's just something that you can actually feel no one rubbing your finger over it. So overall, I would say it'll be a borrow. It's nicely designed for it. Uh, good construction. Um, really solid lockup as well. Uh, so. Um, if it's something that you're looking for, uh, kind of keep an eye on that eBay side of things and hopefully you can get one picked up. And if it becomes more popular, then you can actually get one um, on more of the regular, maybe on uh, White Mountain or some other site that picks it up. But that is about all I have to say about that one today.